Gotta get through this intro fast because oh boy do dragon type Pokemon have a lot of lore and reasonings for their dragon typing, which is what we're going to be talking about today. Why are each of the dragon type Pokemon dragon type and which ones really should not be? Let's get going. But first, I'm sponsoring myself. If you like this series, then please check out our new series that's just like this one. We're going over every single Pokémon move now, too. Explaining things like why they are the type they are, how they work, what the Pokémon does, all that stuff. It's an awesome sequel series to this one. And be sure to subscribe, because we'll also soon be covering every shiny Pokémon's reasonings, how every ability works, type matchups, the science and mythology of how each type of creature would work, and more. And as always, there's a load of theory crafting and lore dives too. As well as just general education videos using Pokemon as ways of explaining general education stuff. Yeah. And also, with this series nearing its completion, I really just want to thank our Patreon supporters, because without you guys, this series would not be nearly as cool as it actually is. Also, massive thanks to Smoof, like the greatest editor we have on the show, making Noggin awesome. Also, do you like t-shirts? Because here are some super limited edition Dragon Month and Fairy Month Noggin t-shirts. Check out this edgy Noggin design, completely surrounded by Pokemon Dragon things and Pokemon Fairy things. They're pretty cool, and the only way you can guarantee that you'll get one is by pre-ordering. Because, kind of like Kickstarter, we're going to take the pre-order numbers and order that many shirts to be made. And then they're gone. Gone forever. And of course, merch like this helps support this channel tremendously. Now then, dragons. The dragon type has so much lore and reasoning behind what it is and what it stands for that we actually split that into its own video, the beginning of another awesome series. What makes a dragon type? For now though, dragons. They're dragon type because they're dragons, but that's not the only reason. Dragons have a lot of dark and elemental magic surrounding them, and you don't have to be a dragon to use draconic magic. Though in the case of Pokémon design inspirations and origins, most of them are just dragons. So after breaking all of the dragon type Pokémon into categories, that will be the first category we cover. Classical dragons. It's just a dragon. And what better dragon to start with than the original dragon Pokémon? Char is up now, okay. Dragonite and its pre-evolutions. Fast theory! Dragonite and Gyarados were switched during development because look at the whiskers and the colors and the shape. Yeah! Dratini and Dragonair are based on serpentine sea dragons of Chinese and Japanese myth. Long blue boys who live in the water but are fully draconic just like these two. Dratini may also be partially inspired by the legend of the Loch Ness Monster, as it's isolationist, lives in water, and is very hard to find. If you took Nessie and just decapitated it, you get a Dratini and a headless Lapras. Notably, Korean dragons such as the Amugi are said to live a thousand years, and then a jewel will fall from the sky, and if they catch it, they will then become a true dragon. This legend may be referenced here, as Dratini has no jewel, then Dragonair gets one, and then it becomes a real dragon. A sudden, drastic change. Dragonair may also pull from the Greek god Hermes and his snaked, winged staff. See the similarities? There's also a dragon with a jewel on its neck in the famous Japanese folk tale, The Tale of the Bamboo Cutter, which may also be referenced. Loads of stuff going on here. Dragonite then seems to pull more from western dragons, especially of the goof variety. That's what I'm gonna call it, goof dragons. I mean, just put Dragonite next to Puff the Magic Dragon, and there you go. See the similarities? Some call dragons in this style fairy dragons, and that's funny to me. I'm just gonna call them goofs. Dragonite is said to be the guardian of the sea, and this is referenced by its Japanese name coming from Ocean Dragon. And there are some goofy looking sea dragons done in classical Japanese art, which may have also played a role in inspiration. Moving on now, Gumi, Sligu, and Gudra confused some people. Why a slimy dragon? That's gross! Though not unheard of, it immediately reminds me of the scaleless dragon boss in Dark Souls 3, my least favorite boss of all of them. So it's not really an unheard of thing. Plus, slimes are a common fantasy fantasy enemy, especially in JRPGs, the lowest of the low often. So a slime eventually becoming a dragon, the highest of the high, well that's pretty dang awesome. Also, there are sea slugs that look similar. There's even the blue dragon, which is a pelagic aeoloid nudie branch, which is a fun name. 
Nudie Branch? Gumi specifically may pull from the Wawaxia, a prehistoric soft-bodied mollusk with scales, making it somewhat draconic. Then, looking to Sligu, it may be inspired by a mythical beast known as Lucarkolf. I'm gonna be mispronouncing like all of these names, by the way. This beast is said to be a serpent and a mollusk at the same time, a long, enormous body carrying a shell, which is also similar to a yokai known as the Shusabora, a dragon that lives in a shell. Upon becoming Gudra, it looks much like the goofy western dragons like Dragonite again, but it's still slimy. The whole line then may also be inspired from medieval manuscripts, as it was common to depict knights fighting snails instead of dragons. No one knows for sure why this was so common, but one theory is that it's humor. In some manuscripts you have knights fighting away dragons the highest and mightiest of the beasts, and then other knights are fighting snails. Ha! Silly knight, that's just a snail. Ha. Plus, snails are super lowly compared to a dragon, so it's just... It's just funny. It's funny. Humor was a different beast back then. Another obvious dragon is Salamence and its line. Salamence is very clearly your standard fire-breathing dragon, though it also borrows elements from the mythical salamander, which is just a regular salamander, but it has fire powers! Salamence does have a salamander body. It even has the three face things on each side, which could be seen as external gills, which many amphibians, like salamanders, have. Salamence is very aggressive and becomes uncontrollable if enraged, and Mega Evolution only exemplifies this trait. It's similar to many myths about dragons burning down villages mercilessly if it just happens to be cranky that day. Its previous evolutions are sort of unique though, but they would fit the next category better, but let's just cover them now. Bagon is a little dinosaur creature that wants to become a dragon, and it tries so hard that it eventually becomes a sort of pupa inside of a shell, shell gone, before finally growing into a dragon. It's like a weird bee, though its body structure is similar to a baby Pachycephalosaurus. So it's like a cute baby dino dragon that becomes a shell pupa. Weird. Like Salamence, Hydraigen and its line of Dino and Zvilus are also merciless, aggressive dragons. But this time, multi-headed, referencing a specific type of dragon, the Hydra. And as it grows, it gets more heads. One such Hydra is Orochi of Japanese legend, Another, the Larinian Hydra of the Greeks, and another, the Slavic Zmegorngigch. All three of these Hydras, evil antagonists in their stories. Deceptive and aggressive. Common traits of the Hydra, I suppose. Hence this Pokemon having the dark typing on top of its dragon. Noivern is a Wyvern, another specific type of dragon or draconic creature. The most notable difference being that Wyvern wings are attached to their front limbs, similar to how bats work, which is also where Noivern gets its large speaker ears from, its bat inspirations, as bats use their massive ears for echolocation. Notably, some design inspiration may also have been taken from the mythical gargoyle, as they are also batty, draconic demon things. And then there's Drampa, the lamest of the dragons, clearly. That's why it's normal dragon type. It's boring. It makes me think of the dragon from The NeverEnding Story. So yeah, super boring. How did anyone get through this movie? I'm, I'm, I can't waste time insulting movies. Dragons can be fluffy, after all. In some parts of the world, they were even fluffy before they were scaly, even. Drampa may be based on Zhu Long, a serpentine Chinese dragon with the face of an old man, because that's completely normal. Normal type. This dragon is so powerful, it's said to bring day and night by opening and closing its eyes. Wow, that's a lot of power. It even brings the winds by breathing. My god! And it's what inspired this thing! We'll all forget this Pokemon's existence in a gen or two. Dredgigon, or Dredgigon, or however you want to pronounce it, is still ugly. And it's what would happen if you took a red-headed rock Agama and made it a classical western dragon. Though it too has some gargoyle and troll elements, as it's said to become immobile when cold, similar to these legendary creatures under certain circumstances. Plus, it's ugly, just like them too. And it likes to live in caves, which is also similar to western dragons, such as those in Wales, which has a dragon on its flag because dragons are super important to them. Plus, the double D and ending with Igon in its name are both traits of the Welsh language. Clearly, there's an inspiration there. Rayquaza, or Rayquaza, pulls from dragon mythos across the world. It's long and sails the sky like many Chinese dragons, yet perfectly matches the description of the Aztec god Quetzalcoatl, who was a flying serpent who created the boundary that separates the sky from the earth and sea. And it lives in the skies always, never descending. 
sustaining itself on dew and air particles, just like Rayquaza is said to do. But that's not all. Rayquaza also fills a role similar to Ziz of Hebrew legend, the king of the birds and all that is air, along with the behemoth king of the land and the leviathan king of the sea the three of them inspiring the Gen 3 box legendaries. Though Rayquaza still pulls from more, as there is also the Lindworm of Norse myth, an extremely long serpentine dragon with two front limbs and no back ones, and all along its body are runes and symbols of power. Again, similar to Rayquaza. In fact, these symbols blast off of its body when it mega evolves because the power contained there is too much. Necrozma is psychic type itself, and gains steel or ghost after it absorbs Solgaleo or Lunala. But when becoming its ultimate form, Ultra Necrozma, it trades those for dragon type. And it's clear to see why. It's a dragon. Specifically, a four-winged wyvern, as its hands are attached to its upper wings. Considering Necrozma appears in the Alola region, which is based on Hawaii, can point us towards Kiwawahine, a Hawaiian dragon goddess who is sometimes depicted as covered in radiant, bright gold. Notably also, the Mo'o are Hawaiian dragons capable of shapeshifting, perhaps referencing the many forms Necrozma takes. Dragons in many legends are extremely powerful beings of magical power. Turning that into an ultra-powerful draconic creature of light is an easy path to follow. And its potentially world-ending nature works as well, as draconic beings are often used in Armageddon myths. And lastly in this category, Reshiram, Zekrom, and Qrem, the three parts of the original dragon. These Pokémon have a ton of lore and reasonings for their dragon typing, and we cover this detail extensively in this video right here. Check it out. In super summary for now though, there are several dragon myths surrounding Yin Yang, and even in the symbology of the three essentials in alchemy, which these three perfectly fit into. And actually, lastly, I forgot about Mega Charizard X. People make fun of Charizard for not being dragon type all the time, despite it, well, literally being a dragon. Like, it's a dragon design. Come on, very clearly your generic western dragon with a bit of goof dragon in there. But there are reasons for its lack of a dragon typing that we go over in this video. But when Mega Evolution was added, they gave one of Charizard's mega forms the dragon typing. It's stated that the overwhelming power that fills its entire body causes it to turn black and create intense blue flames. Clearly, magical dragon flames. That's one of the ways Pokemon differentiates dragon fire from regular fire after all the color. Plus, with the horns and the way the wings are, it just looks a lot more draconic and aggressive. Quite deserving of the typing. And with that, we move on to the next category of dragon type mons. We've now seen all the obvious designs, so what's one step down? How about dinosaurs? with dragon powers. Because really, dragons are just dinosaurs with powers, aren't they? Tyrunt and Tyrantrum explain what I mean perfectly. Both are dragon type, but they're just T-Rexes, or Carnosaurs. Though, they are T-Rexes that can learn Dragon Claw and Dragon Tail. And they are said to have been invincible in the ancient world, and they ruled as king. Which points to dragon myth again. Many tales about dragons have them rule the land as tyrant aggressive kings. There's also Axew, Fracture, and Hack all based on various prehistoric animals. The whole line is like a dicinodont mixed with a plakiarice. This word. Then you just dabble on a pickaxe and then eventually a battle axe. Sprinkle on a couple of dragon traits like the big claws and aggressive looking scale shapes. Yeah. Uh, so I'll admit the reasoning is a bit weak. It's a really mean looking dinosaur, so uh... Dragon type? At least they do learn a ton of dragon moves, so they make full use of the typing. So, they are mean magical dinosaurs, which is basically a dragon. Jang Mo'o, Haka Mo'o, and Komo'o follow suit. Not so much a dragon as much as they are magical dinosaurs. They are like if you took a theropod dinosaur and added Ankylosaurus traits. They perform Haka dances, war dances from various Polynesian cultures, and pull their name origins from Mo'o, which is Hawaiian for lizard or dragon, and also the name of those mythical Hawaiian dragons who could shapeshift, though these Pokemon don't do that. Komodo may also pull some inspiration from the Komodo dragon, and it's called a dragon, and Komodo, Komo'o, come on. So they too are just magical dinosaurs, basically dragons. And lastly in this category we have the Gen 4 box legendaries. 
Dialga, Palkia, and Giratina. I mean, look at them! Until you look really closely, you don't exactly realize just how weird they really are. They are the creators and or guardians of space, time, and the distortion world of antimatter. Clearly positions that would require a large amount of seemingly magical power which is where Dragon comes in. Dialga pulls elements from a shorter-necked Camarasaurus, and Palkia is perhaps an oviraptor, though both add in alien-esque biology too, as well as a few dragon traits. Fun fact! In the game data, Palkia's wings are actually referred to as whiskers. Odd. Giratina is the most draconic of the bunch, a dark, ghostly dragon with some long-necked dinosaur traits. It also resembles some prehistoric centipedes, especially if you look at it like this, and its altered form pulls from the Empipter of European myth. And some say that its two forms resemble the beasts of Revelation, but as I said, being as powerful as they are, being granted the dragon-type fits as dragons are mightily, magically powerful, and tend to come from high places. Now then, next category we're gonna call Sword of Dragons? They aren't really classical easy dragons, or basically dragons because they're dinosaurs with magic powers. They still have dragony traits, so they're still, they're still dragon type. Take Flygon and its previous evolution Vibrava for instance. Vibrava especially just looks like a bug. It's a green antlion, which sort of looks like a dragonfly. <gasps> Is that why it's dragon type for the pun? Ha! I wouldn't put it past Game Freak to do such a thing, but at least when it evolves into Flygon, it's a lot more dragony looking. If you took a western goof dragon and added some dragonfly elements, you get Flygon. Some species of dragonflies are known as sand dragons, which may have led to Flygon's total typing overall, too. Latios and Latias are next, and just looking at them, uh, I guess, I guess they're dragons? Weird feather jets. They are super intelligent and super fast flyers, both common traits of dragons in various mythos. They can also turn invisible, hide amongst people by turning into them, sort of, and their category of the Eon Pokemon may point them towards another possible inspiration, the Aeons of Gnosticism. Immaterial beings of concepts that are always created in pairs, a male and a female, emanated both from God and each other. It's complicated metaphysics spirit science stuff. But being based on such a spiritual being along with the other traits commonly shared with dragons gives them their dragon typing. Next is the Ultra Beast Guzzlord. If you took a trash compactor, a Dodicarus, a Power Rangers villain, and a Western dragon, you get Guzzlord, the gluttonous Ultra Beast always consuming and never defecating. The ravenous, black hole-esque nature of this beast is also very reminiscent of various dragons and greedy antagonists. It even has those crab claws, and in a way, they are reminiscent of extra hydra heads. I mean, Guzzlord already has two faces like some sort of Gurren Lagan mecha. Really, this is just some demonic, draconic anime antagonist with dark, dragony powers. And the other dragon type ultra beast is Naganadel, a super glue wasp with some dragon traits. Though it doesn't even learn many dragon moves, just two naturally. I'd almost consider this a Pokemon or an ultra beast that should not be dragon type. Almost. Because if you just look at the top half, I mean, that's a dragon. Like, a sci-fi dragon, which I guess was the idea. It looks kind of like a space dragon, so it's dragon type, even though it is more so a super glue wasp. Also worth noting, Naganadel, Naga, which is a mythical snake creature. Mythical snakes are sort of like dragons too. Eh? Zygarde's three combined forms are based on the three children of Loki and Angraboda, Fenrir, Jormungandr, and Hell of Norse mythology. Jormungandr especially makes the dragon typing easy to see. It is a large serpent with great power, magical even, and draconic magic equals dragon type after all. Another likely inspiration that they merged in is that of Nidhogg, a serpentine dragon that resides under the roots of the world tree, Yggdrasil, which also has stags and an eagle which inspired the other Pokémon in this legendary trio. Zygarde is the guardian of the ecosystem, a high role of honor and one that can utilize the high power granted by the dragon type thoroughly. The 50% and complete forms may also pull in inspiration from Nagas, especially in the form they take in Hinduism. I mean look, a bunch of snakes behind the main head? What else would you call these? Vishnu is often depicted with such snakes, and Vishnu is known as the god of protection and the preserver of good, similar to Zygarde. In fact, this whole trio not only has inspiration from the creatures residing around Yggdrasil and Norsemith, but also from the three Hindu gods of the 
the Trimorti. A lot more on that in this video here. All in all though, Zygarde utilizes its dragon powers well, and its gimmick of being made from numerous cells makes it appear scaled, like dragons too. It's quite the awesome Pokemon. So it kind of sucks that next up is Dragalge and Kingdra. They are sea dragons. Sea dragons! Ha! Sea dragons are a relative of the seahorse, if you couldn't tell. The dragon typing here is just as bad as Vibrava, really. It's a dragonfly! Ha! But fret not, because there actually is some good reasoning here. In Japanese mythology, seahorses and sea dragons are dragons. In fact, the Japanese word for seahorse directly translates to dragon's child or the child of a dragon. They are baby dragons, essentially. And according to myth, if they can live for a full century, they will turn into a full dragon, such as the Ryujin, a dragon of the sea. So these Pokemon have the dragon type because they are based on sea dragons, which in Japanese myth are baby dragons. So they get baby dragon powers. Gibble, Gabite, and Garchomp are basically land sharks or sand sharks or ground sharks or boulettes, whatever you want to call them. They are from modern fantasy and are basically sharks that live on the land instead of in the water, hence the ground typing. But Garchomp doesn't really look like it's just a shark with legs, now does it? It also pulls from the Carcharodontosaurus, whose name means shark-toothed lizard. So if you take that name literally and add in some western dragon traits, well you get Garchomp. Plus it's super fast, edgy, and aggressive. Not the best of reasons for the dragon typing, but it's enough of one. Which brings us to the last category, the category of not. Well, not really, not just yet. Let me make one more category first, and it's not, but well, okay, fine, I guess. Pokemon that are dragon type, but only just have enough reasoning for it in my book. Just barely scraping by that full on, no good reason at all, they should not be it category. First up is a Lolan Executor. It's a tree, a tall palm tree with coconut heads. Its Pokedex entry in Moon states, as it grew taller and taller, it outgrew its reliance on psychic powers, while within it awakened the power of the sleeping dragon. All right. No, not all right. What is the basis for it? Well, a number of things. It could be a reference to the Dracania genus of trees and shrubs. The name of that genus in Greek means female dragon, and some of the trees in this family look like executor, but that alone does not a good reason make. Well, dragon fruit are a thing that grow in the tropics, and it's Alolan executor. Alola's based on Hawaii, it's in the tropics, eh? Though well, these don't look like dragon fruit at all, so, uh. Well, the one other thing is that it's referencing the Mo'o again, those Hawaiian shapeshifting dragons. The thing that they would most commonly shapeshift into were trees. So, a tree that is a dragon is a thing in Hawaiian myth. So I guess you get a pass, Alolan Executor, even though you don't shapeshift or have any dragony traits beyond the tail, I guess. You just barely make it. Next up, Mega Ampharos. Now how does this thing dragon? Its Pokedex entry mentions that Mega Evolution stimulated its DNA to awaken some long sleeping dragon's blood. Essentially, its sheepish body descended from dragons. Well, I guess it's Welsh then. Welsh dragons were said to be extremely gentle and loving, just like a sheep. And sheep are also super important to the country of Wales. So there's the connection. Also, there are many eastern dragons who are woolly, and also some who are gentle and often associated with clouds, which sheep's wool can look like. Ampharos's slender body with a fluffy cloud-like mane could be playing a role here. Now, I do want to mention one note. There is Chao Feng of Chinese myth. While I was researching, I found a blog post about Chao Feng being the basis of Mega Ampharos's dragon typing, stating that Chao Feng is half sheep, half dragon, and it has a long, thin neck and a big, poofy tail. But upon trying to find the legitimate source for this? It turns out that's not true. Most depictions of Chao Feng have it as a flaming phoenix-maned, lion-headed, stubby-necked, lion dragon, and one with a short, but still fluffy, tail. In fact, Chao Feng is very important to Chinese myth, as every building in the Forbidden City has one or more statues of it on their rooftops for protection. And well, none of them look like Ampharos even a tiny bit. So I don't think Chao Feng is the reason Mega Ampharos is a dragon type. But I still wanted to mention this as another example of da -da -da don't believe everything you read on a blog. And also so that you don't tell me I'm wrong because you looked it up and there's one blog post that says it even though it doesn't do any sources. Still though, Mega Ampharos. 
Eh, I guess. Its Japanese name is also a pun, as dragon and electrical current, when written in Japanese, are similar. So it gets a pass by just skirting the line just a tad. The tiniest of tads. Oh man, you know what's next now, don't ya? It's, it's the, the not, not, not category. category. The Pokemon that really do not have the best or really any good reasons for being the types they are. And first up, Noibat. It's just a freaking bat. Sure, it evolves into Noivern, the Wyvern, but at the moment, it's just a sound bat. It should be normal flying. Loads of Pokemon change type when they evolved, and this should be one too. In fact, while we're at it, just just bring Vibrava in here also. Flygon is Dragony, Vibrava is not, and neither is Turtonator. Oh, it's a big reptile, sure. But at least dinosaurs are close to dragons already, and salamanders have dragon-esque mythology surrounding them. But this ugly thing is just a Mata Mata turtle. In fact, it only even naturally learns one dragon-type move. Poison makes way more sense. The area around volcanoes, where it lives, spew forth all sorts of nasty gases. In fact, its Pokedex entries even state that it gushes fire and poisonous gases from its nostrils. None of them say it's got dragon abilities. Because it doesn't! It's a lava turtle landmine. One that should not be fire dragon, but either mono fire or fire poison instead. Next up, Mega Sceptile. Now, I mean, it gaining dragon type is cool and all, just because it's reptilian also. It's a gecko Dilophosaurus mix, so it's just like the other dinosaurs. Dinosaurs are dragonish, so give them dragon powers and they are dragon type. What then is Mega Sceptile's natural dragon power? Oh, just the move, Dual Chop. What a terrible move to have be your only natural dragon type move. And again, even looking to TMs and breeding and such, the options are severely limited. Fighting makes way more sense than dragon. Way more fighting type moves can be learned. Plus, that would better fit its fast, cool, leaf blades on the forearm motif. Now, I mean, it is cool that as a mega, it can now launch its tail like a missile launcher, like how many lizards can detach their tails for defense. But that does not make you a dragon. In fact, it makes you one whole tail's worth less of a dragon. And that brings us to the not -iest of the bunch. <laughs> Humor. Altaria. Pokemon tend to be pretty straightforward and well designed. Part of the idea is that you can easily tell the typing of the Pokemon just by looking at it. That's why nearly every fire type Pokemon is red or orange. And sure, some Pokemon can be a bit harder to figure out at a glance than others, but never should they imply something completely different. Mixing up ground and rock? Yeah, that's alright. But this thing does not look like a dragon. At all. Not one bit. Not the tiniest bit. It's a cute, fluffy, fairy cloud bird, and it's dragon flying until it mega evolves, and then it becomes dragon fairy. Why? It's a cloud bird. Its design is based on a blue bird mixed with a cloud, perhaps with some inspiration from Ping, a legendary Chinese bird with cloud-like wings. But that's not a dragon, is it? What if I told you that there is a reason for its dragon typing? Would you even believe me? Because there is. It's just not a good one. Its name, in Japanese anyway, is Tiltil. Evolved from Till, by the way. The name comes from a Belgian-French play named The Blue Bird, whose protagonists had the names Mytil and Tiltil, and they were tasked with finding the Blue Bird of Happiness. All right, but that still doesn't say dragon, does it? So we gotta keep going. Okay, well, these characters, and by extension this Pokemon, are named after a star in the sky. A star named Till. Who would've thunk it? And this star is one, just one, of many stars that are in the Draco constellation. Yeah, like I said, it's a reason, but is it a good reason? Does this thing scream dragon? Cause its name in one language references a play about a blue bird and the names of that also corresponds to a Chinese constellation. Uh, you know, why don't you just let me know how good of an idea that is down below? Cause I can't even be mad at this point. I'm just astonished. See you next time on this series. It'll be fairy type. We get to look at this thing again. And I don't wanna. But hey, until then, if you like this series, check out this new series we're doing covering every Pokemon move, explaining what they do, how they work, why they are the type they are, and sometimes why they shouldn't be that type. 
but only sometimes. Most moves make perfect sense. And until next time, please remember to never stop using your noggin by checking out the rest of our dragon videos because it's dragon month. And next month is fairy month. Be sure to tune in for all these dragon and fairy-y special videos. Yeah.